Hello and welcome to this road trip from Furo to Budo, the last installment of Norway's Coastal Road. My name is Emma and I'll be your guide today. So we're just leaving the Furo camping ground and we're now going to make our way towards the FV17 or the County Highway uh, number 17. This is also one of Norway's national uh, tourist roads called uh, the Coastal Road or the Helgeland Coastal Road. It has many different names. And along the way, um, as we drive north towards Buda, I'll tell you a little bit about the area and I'll also give you some tips for your own trip. Uh, but this one, we go to some really beautiful photo stops. We take a really nice detour to Gildeskol. And of course, we go to Solstrommen, which is the famous um, tidal current just south of Buda. Anyway, enjoy the drive. I'll come back to you as we're getting closer towards Svartisen. Arriving at the Brasset picnic area, which is one of the best places to get a photo of the Svart Eastern Glacier. Near here uh, is a ferry which can take you right up to the glacier if you want to visit it during summer. You will see the signs shortly after we leave the parking space. On the other side it's also possible to go hiking or to go glacial hiking and you can also rent bikes from the ferry pier. Uh, the part of Svart Eastern that you can see from here is called Engerbreen, one of the tongues of the glacier. It ends at the lowest point of any glacier on the European mainland, about 20 meters or 66 feet above sea level. Uh, Svartisen is Norway's second largest glacier. It used to be one continuous glacier, but from the 18th century, it has 
uh, been split in two. And the one that we see is the Western Glacier. Now, in 1992, the Norwegian Water Resources and Energy Directorate established a glacier laboratory, and it's the only one of its kind in the world. It is a tunnel under Engerbreen, and the researchers can see the underside of a glacier. I wish that was open to the public. <laughs> that would be so cool. Now, Svadisen is being affected by climate change, of course. From 1930 to 1960, the glacier retreated by two kilometers in length and lost about 200 meters of thickness. It increased again between the 1970s and 1990s. And as of 2010, it has retreated by over 100 meters. In total, the glacier has really diminished. Now, let's continue towards Buddha.
now driving alongside the really beautiful Glom Fjorden. We're going to head into a tunnel, but once we get out to the other side, you will see the exit to the village of Glom Fjord. It is an industrial village mostly, so there won't be too much of interest for you here, but I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, Glomfjord has a population of about 1,000, and it is an industrial village on the fjord. It's based around a hydroelectric plant named after the fjord it's itself. Uh, it was built uh, in 1920. It was taken over during World War II, uh, but it has been a hydro plant uh, owned to the state, owned by the state, sorry, since 1947. I got there in the end. So if you have a little look here, you'll see the turn off to Glomfjord if you wish to go in there. Let's keep driving. We're heading towards a beautiful village called Ernes.
Welcome to Ernest. So we've made it. This is the next big village after Fure. So the population here is about 1600 people and it was originally a single homestead and farm. It became a trading place in the late 18th century and a lot of the buildings from the 19th century still remain. They're built up around an open air museum, which you can visit if you wish to spend some time in Ernest. You may know Ernest, it is one of the stops for Hurtigruten. They typically stop here northbound in the mornings and then southbound in the middle of the night. It is often considered, and it has actually been named, one of the most beautiful approaches uh, into a port on the whole coastal journey. It's also where they do the um, Arctic Circle ceremony if you're going north. So a lot of the old buildings are down to the left. We can't really see much of the town from where we are. We're sort of driving above and behind it. But the main town center is down to the left.
are now arriving at one of my favorite detours, the Gildeskull Church. Uh, this medieval church is from the 12th century. There is a newer church from the 19th century, but this is a really well-known historic site here in northern Norway, so I'm so excited to get to show it to you. Now, there have been people living here for at least a thousand years. The church was historically in the center of the village, and items have also been found from the Viking Age. It is believed that this was a gathering place in the pre-Christian times. The name Gildeskull also refers to a meeting hall or a guild hall. So you can start to see some of the old buildings along our left, and now we're turning into the Gildeskull area. So on the right, this is where you see the vicarage. These buildings are from around 1750, though some parts are older. In front of us, we can now see the medieval church from the 12th century. It is built in a Romanesque style. Now straight ahead is the Gildeskull main church, which was built in a neo-Gothic style from 1881. And if you want to go for a walk, it's possible to walk from the church down to the water. There are walking trails everywhere. So there is the vicarage straight ahead. So the property today is owned by a museum called the Nordland Museum, and you can visit different exhibitions about life in this area, including religious and cultural history. The cultural landscape around the churchyard is untouched, and the burial mounds, old stone mounds, and the old church path are examples of what have been preserved in the area. There's a lot to do. Uh, you can follow the marked paths, which I really recommend. You'll be able to see the old boat piers, the grave mounds, the old houses, and of course the old churches. So now we will continue our drive towards Buda. I'll come back to you when we're reaching Solstroman, uh, just south of Buda.
are now approaching Sol Strumman, which is one of the world's strongest tidal currents. Up to 400 million cubic metres of seawater forces its way through a 3 kilometre long and 150 metre wide strait every six hours. The whirlpools are up to 10 metres in diameter and 5 metres in depth. The current is created when the tide tries to fill the Schurstad Fjord. The height difference can be up to 1 metre. So this is a really famous tidal current and you've probably heard of it uh, if you come with Hertie Gruten. They actually do a tour here as well. The area has actually been settled for a thousand, or over a thousand years and remains of a 10,000 year old hunter settlement in the area and the oldest known uh, traces of human settlement in Buddha. The hunters were attracted by the abundance of fish in the water and Solstromen is also mentioned in the Viking sagas. It is known that the Viking Raut, he lived in this area. And the reason people lived here is because of the rich fisheries created by the strong tidal current. There's a lot of fish in the waters, so fishing is really popular here. You can also go scuba diving or um, snorkeling. Uh, guided tours are available to do all of those sorts of activities. It is also a very popular area to see sea eagles. So you can do safaris to see sea eagles in the area as well. So while I have some information on the screen about what you can do here, uh, what we do in this drive is we park in the main car park, which is where you'll likely park yourself. And then we go for a little walk to go and look at the tidal current. So if you watch the video, you'll see how it all works. <laughs> 